What up, guys? Your boy Quake back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 258. And we got an insane episode, a lot of stuff, a lot of beef, a lot of dissing, a lot of what I like in hip hop competition. Some from the males and some from the females, but mainly from the females. Uh, the male is somebody that we already know loves to compete, and that's Eminem. And uh, he goes at Benzino in the recent uh, Doomsday Part 2 track that came out. So we're going to break that down. Uh, I recorded that previously before I recorded this full episode. So you're going to see me wearing different clothes, different type of clips. Uh, I'm just putting it all into one for the podcast because it's regardless, it's news that happened this uh, these past couple of days that we normally do. So let's talk about it. And the first thing I want to talk about is Trey Songs. I know it's a weird left shift. Uh, like I said, I always give you guys updates even if it's months, years, whatever, later, if we talked about something. So I want to give you guys an update about Trey Song's $10 million sexual assault lawsuit that he was facing. And it turns out it's been dismissed. And it's not for him being innocent, but it's just for the person not really wanting to cooperate. Uh, Trey Song is no longer potentially on the hook for the $10 million uh, as a sexual lawsuit against him has been dismissed due to a failure on the part of the alleged victim. TMZ has obtained a copy of the judge's order to dismiss, which was filed on Wednesday, January 26th. The filing happened because the defendant, listed as Jane Doe in the documents, failed to reply to the Bottoms Up singer's motion to dismiss on time. It's unclear whether the alleged victim will be able to file her lawsuit again or whether it has been dismissed with prejudice. Uh, the suit was filed in June of last year, with Jane Doe alleging that Trey Songs exposed her breasts at her pool party at a Connecticut casino in 2013. In documents obtained by Radar Online back in September, Songs and his legal team argued that the case was way past the statute of limitations of three years. So they're not denying that it happened, but they're just saying it's a long time ago since it's happened. Uh, the woman claimed that the alleged lawsuit happened in August 2013 at the Foxwoods Resort in Connecticut. The lawsuit demanded $10 million for sexual battery and assault, which included claims that Trey Songs allegedly grabbed and exposed her breasts at a pool party after she merely tried to get a picture with the singer. Uh, there is a video, and a video captured by a friend of the accuser who subsequently sent the video to TMZ. The singer can be seen grabbing the accuser's bathing suit top, dropping it, and exposing her breasts. So there is little, literal video footage that this happened. Yeah, so there is video footage of this. We talked about this a while ago. I, I'm not surprised that she's not showing up because I'm not saying this happened. There's no definitive proof. I'm not saying that this is the case. But there is a potential, allegedly a potential possibility that Trey Songs paid her under the table and said, hey, uh, I'll give you 100000 500000 Let's just end this, you know, right here instead of going through the whole court proceedings and dealing with it, uh, you know, long term. Because, yeah, if, if there's a potential chance she could have lost the $10 million lawsuit and walked away with nothing and potential lawyer fees. Or there's a chance that she could have won and walked away with $10 million. But the chances of that... I don't know. I would have took it for the 10 million because I have video footage of it, proof of it that it happened. So it's a little different, but I mean, I don't know. Um, who knows what happened? Maybe she just doesn't care anymore. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe she feels like she's not going to win. So she could care less. I don't know. What, what, what would be a reason for somebody to stop pursuing a lawsuit of $10 million? I don't know. Unless somebody paid me under the table behind the scenes where nobody knows that's a potential possibility. That's the only way I would stop pursuing something if it made sense, but if I'm going to sue you publicly, you know, I'm going to go full on for her. but you know, she probably, she probably knew that she couldn't win the lawsuit. So in her, maybe I'm just, this is all in my mind. This is not fact. This is just what I'm thinking. If a lawsuit like this happens, maybe in her mind, she knew that she couldn't win, but she wanted to destroy his public image by just having it out there that there's a lawsuit of $10 million against Trey Songs for sexually assaulted and the video footage coming, you know, and posted by TMZ. So just to make him look bad, despite him winning or not, or her winning or not, doesn't matter. That's another reason why somebody would probably file. But yeah, it would cost money just to file. So interesting enough, uh, in what appeared to be an attempt to further terrify and humiliate the woman, Trey Songs followed the assault with a degrading chant, titty in the open, titty in the open, read the court documents. Uh, Jane Doe also named... Uh, Kevin Lyles, Atlanta Records, and Trey Song's production company in the lawsuit claiming that they were negligent in their supervision of their client and thus responsible for his actions. Uh, entities such as Atlantic Records and key executives like Kevin Lyles must 
reassess their obligations toward ensuring the safety and dignity of everyone at any event associated with their artists. The accuser's attorney, George Vrebeck, told Rolling Stone, my client demands transparency, accountability, and prioritization of safety over profits. However, it's worth, worth noting that Jane Doe reportedly demanded $5 million from Trey Songs to make the case go away, an offer which she subsequently refused. So maybe, maybe Trey Songs paid more than $5 million to make it go away. I don't know, because if, if she refused $5 million, then that one hundred five hundred thousand, whatever I was talking about earlier, doesn't mean shit. So, yeah, who knows what the reason is, man? Uh, there could be also threats to this woman for filing a lawsuit. That's another uh, route, mind you. Like I say, I'm repeating this ninety million times because I don't, I don't want anybody to get it twisted. I'm just going through the reasons why somebody would potentially, you know, drop a lawsuit of this magnitude with evidence of this magnitude is possibly because you know those things happen. Either one, she just filed a lawsuit to make him look bad with the video, with the lawsuit, with it reaching headlines. That's the first thing. And then she didn't care about following up Two, Trey songs potentially paid her behind the scenes to get rid of it and be done with it. Or three, Trey songs potentially threatened her. You know, that's another route. These are all just things in my mind that like, if a lawsuit like this happens, those are the three things that I would think of. I don't know any other reason. There probably is other reasons, but those are the top three in my mind you know, that would come out. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, it's dropped. I don't know. I think Trey songs had another lawsuit. I think he got hit with like three. I know two of them right now have so far have been dismissed. So this one's been dismissed. It's done. Uh, and then the, there's another one that was dismissed or something like that, that the accuser like dropped it or I don't know what happened. So it's looking good for Trey songs in terms of lawsuits. Like he's not dealing with has, hasn't had to deal with the full length of a lawsuit. Uh, you know, so we'll keep an eye out on the other ones and what happens moving forward. Birdman. So Birdman did an interview with Jalen Rose, which is an NBA legend and analyst and all that, which surprising to me. And Birdman talked about a lot of things. He talked about how, uh, you know, back in the cash money days, he bought like 50 cars for everybody in the hood and just gave him free cars. Uh, talked about how proud he is of Lil Wayne and uh, Drake and Nicki Minaj for doing their thing and uh, Birdman and Lil Wayne recently were, were seen in the studio together. So I don't know what they're cooking up, but cooking up, but that'll be, that's fire to see because Birdman and Lil Wayne are literally like father and son. Um, and then he talked about why he started rich gang and how it was supposed to be something that Lil Wayne embraces and takes on, but that never happened. And, uh, but this, I just want to talk about this. This was the most interesting out of all those things. Uh, Birdman believes the South deserves more respect for keeping hip hop alive. What do you guys think? Um, to me, it's interesting. So let me play the clip for you guys. As hip hop turned 50, there's so many artists you've influenced. There's so hey, many. Blah, blah, all right, hip hop 50, right? But I still say that they don't compliment the South enough for me. I agree. And I don't respect that shit about what they're doing in hip hop. And um, I never will respect it because the South, I ain't going to just say us, I'm going to say the South. We paid a, a big wave of keeping hip hop alive. Mm -hmm. and I don't think they compliment us enough. And um, I always was told what, what a nigga don't give us, we gonna get it anyway. So, mm -hmm. but I don't respect it at all. I thought about that. I've seen a couple of tributes, and I've seen Uncle Luke talking about this. And yeah, that man deserve a lot of respect for what he did. Yes, no question. And like yourself in his own way, led a label, create a lane. Yeah, Luke Nunn was around before we was around. Correct. That, that man was huge, and he played a big part into hip-hop when nothing was popping. Nothing no popping. doubt. Like, he went to court. He went to bat about it. Correct. And that's the reason, for y'all that don't know, that's the reason why those stickers, parental advisory, are actually on albums. They was locking them niggas. They was locking them up. When they was going to show, well, it's, it's, see the Dolores think, Tuckers and all of them. I don't think they the the South get the respect that we deserve. That's just my opinion, and personally, fuck who don't like it. That's just my take on it, and all the accomplishments that we did and we do. I think we deserve more respect, but um, respect come with honor. But still, as long as we getting the checks and we making the money, I'm good with that too. But. Still, the recognition comes with the game. Right. And, and, and I'll be like, you know, 
I'll take the awards, but I prefer I'd the money. I'd rather the money <laughs> over anything. <laughs> and for a fact, we getting the money. Ain't yeah. no hand down about that. We getting the money, but still, uh, money comes with love and money comes with respect. And we earned all those rights. We ain't asking nobody to give us shit. We earned that shit. I agree with Berman. I 100% agree. I think the South gets criticized for one, not being lyrical, which is false. There's uh, so many lyrical rappers in the South. It's just people refuse to actually acknowledge them or pay attention to them. Chameleon Air, to me, automatically comes off the top of my head. He is so lyrical, and he can... Honestly, I got him in my top 10. Scarface is another example. There are so many lyrical artists in the South. It's ridiculous. Two, the South has kept hip-hop alive. I want to say from 2006 till now, really the South's been controlling. You know, what if I just say, what is, why is everybody so mad at the South, Paul? Switch the style up. Change the South, Paul. Come on, man. That's make it rain back in 2006 when people were mad at Fat Joe for sounding like the South and getting Southern artists to work with him. I always remember that line back in the Make It Rain record. So, yeah, he's right, and Uncle Luke has done a lot. If you guys ever watched my video how Uncle Luke changed the music industry forever, he had a huge role in not only speaking for the freedom of speech of hip-hop to allow artists to say what they want, but he also had a role in inventing the parental advisor sticker that you guys saw in albums back when albums were actually being shipped and physical CDs. If it wasn't for that sticker, we wouldn't be able to get albums with cuss words in them. It's that simple. Uh, and that applies to every genre, by the way, not just hip hop. Like he had a role in making sure that artists were free to speak how they want to speak on music. And that, 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 and they, that puts him up top of everything. So the South definitely needs more respect. I agree with Birdman. And, uh, you know, it's a great interview. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's Jalen Rose's interview with Birdman. You can just search up Birdman, Jalen Rose, and you'll find it, all uh, the full thing. So Eminem is back officially with a new track. And, of course, I'm going to always talk about it, especially when he goes in on people. And this time, he's specifically taking his aim towards Benzino. If you're out of the loop, Eminem appeared on the Lyrical Lemonade album All Is Yellow on a track called Doomsday Part 2. And the original Doomsday track was a track by Juice World and Corday that was released by Lyrical Lemonade a while ago. This is Part 2 with solely Eminem. And the production of this track is sampled by Eminem's old track, Role Model, off the Slim Shady LP, which is really cool. It's nice to kind of bring that old late 90s, early 2000s sound back. And Eminem sounds amazing on this track. I've noticed that his flows kind of changed a little bit. His voice tone has changed, which I appreciate a lot more. And it's getting me more excited for what Eminem has to come, hopefully in 2024, when it comes to possibly delivering a new album. So with Eminem going at people, which I always appreciate, I've you know been raised in the early 2000s music where artists will go directly at people instead of the subliminal shots. So I always appreciate Eminem when he does this. So let's break down the track bar for bar, the lyrics of what he's talking about. He sends some slight joking shots at Kanye West, Lil Wayne, and Drake. And then he goes in on Benzino, talks about his daughter, Koi LaRae, and then he even gives props to J. Cole towards the end. There is only one verse on this track. It's fairly a short track, but it's very nice. I think it's, it's a fire song. It's a good way to kind of introduce Eminem to 2024. And hopefully it's a nice way to hype up, you know, the upcoming album that we're potentially getting, at least all these rumors flying around that we're going to get it. So skipping a few lines, he says this, but I'm not trying to be controversial. I'd rather talk shit with the purpose that matters, like who had the second best verse on Forever. So if you guys don't remember the track Forever in 2009 was Drake, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, and Eminem. And Eminem here is saying, I had the best verse, and then debate about who had the second best one. And this is not the first time that Eminem has said this. He said this on the fall track that he released on Kamikaze a while ago. On that track, he said the fans waited for this moment like that feature when I stole the show. Uh, sorry if I took forever. Uh, a lot of people debate about who had the best verse, but, uh, you know, that's, to me, it, it's kind of a toss-up between Lil Wayne and Eminem. I go back and forth uh, with those. I think everybody did their thing, but uh, it's a great... I, I miss tracks like that. I wish more hip-hop tracks had a lot more superstars on one track together. Uh, that whole DJ Khaled, we, you know, Kumbaya by the fire type of music. Uh, I wish they would do a little bit more, more of that, but uh, it hasn't been done in a while. So hopefully somebody has the balls to do that again because it's interesting. I like to see a bunch of top-tier artists on the same track 
going at it. But continuing on, this is where he takes shots at Benzino. He says, now I got a riddle. What? One condition. You mustn't laugh. Okay. What is the opposite of Benzino? Uh, what? A giraffe. Ha ha. Go at his neck. How the fuck is that? How can I go at something he doesn't have? Arms so short, he can't even touch his hands when they're up above his head doing jumping jacks. <laughs> so, you know, if you look at Benzino, it's it's kind of clear, <laughs> clear. Clearly, you can tell he doesn't have a neck. It's like very, you know, he's very built, very big guy, but he doesn't have a neck. A lot of people joke on him for that. And Eminem's doing that same thing. And, uh, you know, he's got a very stocky build uh, as a person. But uh, And if you're probably wondering why Eminem is going at Benzino, you know, after all these years, you would think, you know, the beef has settled down. They've kind of moved on. Benzino keeps doing these interviews and basically bringing race into uh, Eminem's uh, situation once again. You know, he's saying, why is Eminem a top five rapper of all time? Or why is he the face of hip hop? He's white. He's not part of the culture. And this is something that's been going on with Benzino and Eminem for a long time. If you don't know the history between Eminem and Benzino, check out my documentary, Eminem versus Benzino, Who Really Won? It's it breaks down everything from the start of, you know, Eminem getting upset at the Source magazine, which Benzino ran and owned at the time, uh, not giving him, you know, five star mics, which were huge at that time. If you got five star mics on your album, it was basically a classic and Eminem never really got that. He felt snubbed by the Source magazine and then called out Benzino and it got into something crazy with race. Then Benzino, you know, leaked a tape where it sounded like Eminem was racist. Eminem responded to it. So the whole breakdown is in that documentary. But Benzino in 2023 was going around doing interviews, basically uh, saying, why is Eminem the face of hip-hop? Why is he pushed up to this plateau? And why is everybody praising him when hip-hop is black culture? It's all our culture, and so on and so forth. So Eminem is basically responding to all these things Benzino is saying, because he said a lot of things. Even his daughter got you know dragged into this, and even Eminem responds to his daughter, Koyla Ray, who's her own artist in her own right. So When you look at Eminem and his fans, they're the most craziest, disrespectful fans that we have in the culture. I think he was the most streamed... Uh artists on YouTube in 2022. Exactly what I said was going to happen, happened. Didn't want to give us Eminem and he's the greatest rapper and he's the most and oh, it's not, it's not, it's not fair, man. Okay, lyrically, but I got the masturbation elevation. I don't rap like that. I'm not into rap like that. I didn't come up growing up listening to rap like that. I listened to rap that was going on, stuff that I could relate with that's going on in my hood. You didn't have to be super lyrical. I like lyrical people too, Nas, you know, Jay. Like they could put words together good. But the, I wasn't into that rap anyways. And then they're going to see, well, who is the most streamed and the most sold? And then his face is going to pop up. Why, why does that bother you though? Because, because it's our culture. It's ours. It's black people's culture. It's us. Why should somebody else get the credit to be the, to be the face of it? Uh, continuing on in the lyrics, you know, he, he pokes fun at how, how short Benzino is. Uh, arms so short, he can't even touch his hands when they're above his head doing jumping jacks. Sorry, I don't mean to upset you, Ben, when I talk about all the debt you in. I hear that you've been creeping on the low in them cheap hotels that they catch you in. Jesus Christ, dog, when you said 210, never guessed you meant at that red roof end. So if you don't know, uh, there's been a lot of, you know, police officers wear body body cams. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of body cam footage from police officers here in Georgia that, uh, you know, stopped Benzino a lot of times. He's been arrested in and out of arrest. And uh, there's one moment they caught him at a red roof in hotel. And, you know, I'm not one to judge people's, you know, sexuality and what they do. But uh, it looked like he was, you know, with another man in a hotel room. And it looked a little, you know, uh, zesty to say. I can't really say word for word, but you know what I'm talking about. It looked a little, you know, zesty. Uh, and then he's, you can, Eminem poked fun at that. He continued on in the verse and said, in a room with one single bed, two men. Shady, man, you can't, uh, yes, you can. Well, I guess then I regret to inform you, hate to spoil the day, but this doesn't bring me to no joy to say. Guess that Coyle Ray feats in the toilet A. Damage due to flows, collateral, I suppose. Gap pointed like mine and Sandra Bullock's nose. Yeah, it's hilarious. But he's saying that the guests, that the Coyle Ray, you know, collaboration is down the toilet. It's not going to happen because Coyle Ray actually got asked about this on Math Hoffa's podcast. And, you know, he asked if, if, if Eminem ever reached out to do a track with you, would you ever do a track with uh, him? And she said, you know, I'd have to first 
she first said no. And then she was like, I'd have to, you know, sit down with my father, Benzino, and talk to him about it. And if he approves it, then I'll do it. But that's that was her take on it. So if M reached out to do a record with you, would you do it with him? No, I, no, hell no. Unless, unless I got my father's blessing. Like, I would sit down with my father, first of all, and bring it up to him. I wouldn't even ask him. I would be like, yo, listen, this is what happened. And, you know, that's that's fair, man. Uh, that's family, so it makes sense, even though they even have their own beef here and there. But Coyla Ray's kind of done her own thing. And uh, she's kind of blown up to her own superstar status, way bigger than her father was, musically at least. So uh, that's pretty cool to see. Continuing on, this is where uh, Eminem decides to give praise to J. Cole because J. Cole in 2023 was praised by a lot of people for having the best verses in that year and uh, for basically getting better and better. Uh, he's, he's dominated in 2023 when it comes to verses, guest features. Even though he didn't release an album, he still killed it. And he says this, you probably feel like you're going to die because you're in my morgue and you're tied up like a tight score. And that's why I'm back with Cole Bennett and I've been at the level J. Cole been at. It's aftermath that I ride for till I die. So very cool that he gave props to J. Cole. I would love to hear an Eminem and J. Cole track uh, that's long overdue. I hope this new Eminem album, you know, has more hip hop like features. I know he's been, you know, he, he dabbles here and there with like pop stars and stuff, but I would like this more to be, you know, more hip hop, get Kendrick, get Cole, get J Drake on there, get, uh, you know, 50 cent back on a track where you guys are back on there and just more. I don't know. I feel like the kamikaze type of ride. I really enjoy that kamikaze album a lot. So I'm always a fan of when Eminem responds to people because that's the old school, you know, in me that I, I, I love the direct shots at people. I don't like the subliminals. That's something I critique Drake a lot for because he does a lot of those subliminals. But uh, let me know what you guys think of the track, man. And if you guys want to know more of the history, like I said, of the Eminem and Benzino beef, check out my documentary, Eminem versus Benzino, who really won. And I break down everything of how it started up until the video was released, which was, I believe, I want to say, damn, I actually released this a while ago. I was going to say 2019, but it was released in 2018. So it's been a while. Of course, I'd probably have to do an updated version, but really, you know, it's been Benzino kind of taking shots at him. And then at a certain point, Benzino says, I apologize. I'm done with the beef. And then he goes back and takes shots at him. It's because Eminem, you know, even Eminem plays around with Benzino a lot and jokes around with him and uh, sends shots his way. So uh, it's one of the funnier beefs, I think, in hip hop history. But, um, you know, I, I'm just, I find it awesome that Eminem doesn't care what level he's at. He'll go at anybody. And I appreciate that, especially as a hip hop fan. I like competition as long as it doesn't get violent. I love it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the track. And, you know, hopefully we get a new Eminem album. Let's continue. And after the Eminem Doomsday Part 2 diss, Benzino has decided to respond to Eminem. Yes, he's decided to respond to Eminem. He said he's going to promise a response, and as I'm recording this podcast, he literally dropped it, like right now. So I'm going to go over it just in a bit. But first, uh, I want to talk about Benzino's daughter and her response to Eminem mentioning her on the track. Uh, this is what she said. Misery loves company. Guys went through so much shit in 2023. You would have thought people found God in 2024. Motherfuckers be so caught up in the devil's work. It's impossible for them to change. Hurt people hurt people. Uh, rap beef is so washed and tired, exhausting, embarrassing, just fucking overall corny as fuck with a trash emoji. I got no issues with no one. I'm so locked in on my grown and sexy vibes. If anybody don't like me, that's something they got to take on with themselves. There's no way I'm about to entertain these grown ass men and the beef they've been having for over 20 years. Laugh my ass off. It's so stupid. All I can do is laugh. Two decades later, get the fuck out of here. I'm grown. Move along. Go stream my shit. And who the hell said, she said this, man, who the hell said I wanted an Eminem feature? Imagine Eminem, I want to come through, laugh my ass off with a bunch of fire emojis. So, I mean, hey, here's the thing, man. If Coyle Ray, if Eminem offered a feature to Coyle Ray, she would take it. Let's let's 100% be honest. That's one of the biggest hip hop artists of all time. Like, who the fuck wouldn't take an Eminem feature? I know she said, I'm going to talk to my dad and I would consult him. I'm going to be honest. I don't think she she really would. Maybe, I don't know, maybe blood's thicker than water, but, uh, you know, we'll see on that. But let's let's go over this Benzino track. So, the Benzino track just dropped right now, and shout out to Genius, the people that are writing the bars, the lyrics. One contributor, shout out to you, whoever you are, the one contributor, you're a beast. So, he broke down the bars on the track. 
let's go over them. I'm doing this literally live as I'm recording. So uh, the previous ones I broke down before the podcast. So let's, let's go over this. Let's see what this is about. He says, candy ass, Eminem, bitch ass, feminine, mad. He lack melanin all valued up again. I've heard of feminine. I've heard Eminem candy ass, Eminem. He started out saying, yo, Eminem, you should be called Skittles, sweet ass motherfucker. So, uh, he lacks melanin, which is, you know, melanin, uh, black people have that in their skin tone. He doesn't have it all volumed up again. You know, the drugs, uh, shit, here we go. Benzino versus Jim Crow. You know, this whole Jim Crow and racism and race part that Benzino plays played out at this point, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Noah Krusty, Noah Custy, when I see one, how many times you overdose? Cracker on crack who rap, but hate they hate black in this show. Uh, invade our culture, then insult us. Time you get exposed. Lo ho, this Christina, Mariah, Michael, or Brittany. Uh, who, what kind of f- fuck go to war with people dancing and singing? That has been a huge critique of Eminem that he hasn't really beefed with like real rappers, which I think the, the number one real rapper that he beefed with is Cannabis. I think uh, cannabis, cannabis is the only rapper that can go bar for bar with him. Uh, but that is that is kind of um, you know I think it's sad, man. I think Eminem should have should have had a moment where he beefed with somebody that was like that had the same like Jay Z. Imagine Eminem and Jay Z beef like a battle in their prime. That would have been crazy. Or he did beef with Ja Rule, but that was mainly Fifty Cent's thing that he adopted. So who else at the time? I don't know, man. He beefs with Ti. Just throw that in there. Or somebody who was big in the early two thousand, man. I don't know. I wish he would have been involved more with the game beef that 50 had, but uh, that never really happened. He only spit a couple bars on the re-up uh, song. But uh, yeah, continuing on, I agree with that, that Eminem really hasn't beefed with any, anybody major. So he's got, he's got, but that's something that we've heard already before. Uh, don't, now he involves 50, 50 cent. Don't fuck with 50 and keep it a buck. You ain't tough. I don't know, Benzino. Now you're pushing. Now look what he says. Your baby mom could get a bag like how Cassie did puff. Yeah, I don't know about that. If they read your lyrics in court like they did Young Thug from drugs, chopping her up, corpse in the trunk. So now he's going back to Eminem because 50 Cent does not rap about chopping people up and corpse in the trunk. You a punk, plan my funeral, please. You shoot who? Square ain't even circle the block for proof. Who's Square? I don't know who he's referring to in Square. And the truth, my daughter had a life that I never had. I'm probably more Boston George than America's dad. But I provide food, clothes, gifts, kept you excited. Now you let the industry really lynch, keep us divided. But back when I got indicted in and out of court fighting, you was in a pretty home with something foreign to ride in. Of course, I tell you, hate your father. He could never find his trailer park swine bitch shit. He's talking about Eminem. Of course, I tell you to hate your. I can tell you hate your father. He can never find his trailer park swine bitch. Shit, you're miserable and you're alone. Uh, and we think they cloned you. You look weird. Don't care how much. This is a bar that they haven't figured out. They put on you. Never seen with a girl. Never seen with a bitch. But got a song. What if I was gay with Junior Lurk? Look, look, uh, Lucas. That's kind of crazy. That's actually kind of a hard bar, man. Never seen with a girl, never seen with a bitch, but got a song, What If I Was Gay with Junior Lurk. Why am I messing this? Joiner Lucas. Why am I messing this up so much? Joiner Lucas. Joiner Lucas, yeah. But yeah, that's that's actually, I actually like that bar. Hey, never seen with a girl, never seen with a bitch, but got a song, What If I Was Gay with Joiner Lucas. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why I'm messing up his name. It's Joiner Lucas. How am I messing this up? But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an all right track. It's nothing that like Eminem, you know, Eminem is punching down on everybody that, uh, which I don't mind, man. I think Eminem is cool for defending himself and just trolling at this point. I mean, that's the thing that kind of keeps Eminem uh, excited. I think in music is that when he can compete with people, I think that's, that's the battle rap in him that he loves, that he loves to do the Kamikaze album. Like I said, was a great album for his like second run in the music industry. I think it's his Right behind Relapse is the best one, in my opinion. And then Recovery's third. But that's a whole different topic. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, let me know what you guys think, man. Listen to the diss track. It's nothing too special. I um, mean, it's been Zeno. He, his daughter has been more successful as a rapper than uh, he's ever been uh, because it's just not his thing. You can tell he's kind of offbeat a little bit. It's just not, you know, it's the same thing with Melly Mel, man. It's, it's a lot older artists that uh, 
just are out of touch and can't really. I don't know if it's better than the Melly Mel one, though. What do you guys think? I think it's a little bit better because it's a little bit more modern. And at least the Melly Mel thing was just too old school. You know, ha, I've admitted this track. Ha, I've admitted that. Ha, like that was, bro, we're not in the 70s and 80s, bro. Like we're, we're, we're in 2024. Like that was weird. So, yeah, I think this is a little bit better than the <laughs> Melly Mel track. But that's not saying a lot, guys. You guys know that. That's not saying much. So, yeah, I guess we'll keep our eye out and see if Eminem responds to this. I really could care less if he does or not. I think this is, like Corey LeRae said, his Benzino's daughter, uh, it's an old 20-year-old beef. Um, I get Benzino says stuff in interviews and disrespects Eminem, but at this point, Eminem's just punching down for, for the fuck of it, just for the fun of it, which is, I guess, cool in its own way because I like competition regardless, but uh, nothing too crazy. So, yeah, we'll keep our eye out if anything else changes. Snoop Dogg revealed something really cool, man. And I think this is um, this is something that I think more artists should partake in. So let's play the clip of what he what he's talking about. It's it's good to see you talking about the best. It's good to see what they did for Face and um and Rakim down in Houston, Hip Hop Fifty, uh, giving them that cash and honoring them. I think that was good for them, man, because you know they both had some some health battles. And uh, they both came up out of it. So for what Hip Hop 50 did for their own, I think that was beautiful. But you got to take care of your own, though, yeah. Jack. You got to yeah. set an example. We we do it privately. I've done it many years with so many artists that needed help, that needed physical and financial help. Mm -hmm. It's not a public thing for me. I'm not going to say I helped him. Now. Right. But when they did that publicly, that's what it's supposed to be because now the young generation, respect your elders because mm -hmm. you're making all this money. Not that you have to, but if you love this rapper and respect this rapper and you see he's down on his luck, he may need some money, but he has pride. He can't right. even ask you because mm -hmm. he used to be you. Mm -hmm. Right. But you have enough man in you to say, uh, I'm going to throw you something. Mm -hmm. There's been many times where me and 50 Cent together have called some of our OGs and put bags on him. Mm -hmm. And the OG like, oh, man, nah, we're like, we ain't trying to hear that shit. We know you need it. Yeah. Here, nigga. Mm -hmm. That's what it got to be. Yeah. But that's who we are. That's who me and 50 is. Right. I can't speak for everybody else. But if any OG that me and him respect, it's happened a couple of times. That's why I can bring his name up. I don't have to say the person or the right. people. But he feel like I feel. If it's an OG that need it, that's down, that don't know how to ask for it. You don't think twice. I put it in. They like, oh. 50 just, I'm like, damn, nigga beat me to it. Hold on, I got to call this <laughs> right? I don't like you beat me to the donation pile, nigga. Hold on, we're going to donate together. Yeah. Goddamn yeah, right. I think that's really, really needed in the hip hop. I think the OG hip hop artists are somewhat struggling. So the Melly Mel situation with Eminem that I talked about previously earlier in this podcast is a perfect example of an artist that not, I don't know, I don't want to word it too bad, not like feels resentful, or mad that these newer artists are making a lot more money, but it could be in a better situation if hip hop was at a bigger place. Cause they're the ones that started it. They're the ones that build the foundation for it. So if it wasn't for them, hip hop would not be, you know, people wouldn't be able to benefit off it, including me, you know, cause I, I do hip hop documentaries, news, everything. So if it wasn't for Melly Mel, you know, this thing wouldn't be possible. And that's the reality of the situation. So these artists that started early on, there wasn't any money to be made in it. So now they see all these artists making hundreds of millions of dollars, billions. There's Jay-Z, a billionaire. You know, it, it, it's good to look out for them. You know, if, if they are struggling, if there's something that comes out, if, if these artists hear something, there's nothing wrong with, you know, the artists that are making it, making hundreds of millions of dollars like Snoop and 50, to jump in and be like, yo, you need something OG? I got you. I'll give you 50000 I'll give you 100000 Thank you for being the OG. Just make sure you're good, blah, blah, blah. I like, you know, some people were mad that Snoop Dogg mentioned it in the interview, but nothing wrong with that. I think that's cool, man. I think that's a cool behind the scenes thing. Uh, and more artists should do it. man. Jay-Z's a billionaire. Help out artists, you know, OGs that are in the game that helped out. Look out for them. And uh, yeah, very cool, very cool insight behind the scenes. 50 Cent, speaking of 50 Cent, uh, he's getting sued. Now you're probably wondering why. Well, the girl that got hit by the mic a while ago, I think it was like six, seven months ago, she is suing officially. Uh, initially, charges were dropped by the LAPD because they were like, you know, there's nothing to investigate here. Uh, those were dropped, so then people thought, you know, you know, kind of moved on from the situation, but she's suing, so let's go over article. 50 Cent has been sued after he threw a microphone in the crowd that hit a woman in the face. 50 had earlier avoided criminal charges over the incident, but the victim, Power 106 host Brianna Mongain, has claimed that she was permanently injured 
after being hit with a microphone during a gig at the Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles last August. Uh, in court documents obtained by TMZ, Mungane claims that once 50 realized his microphone wasn't working correctly, he threw it in the crowd and hit her in the face and wrist, leading to severe and permanent injuries. Uh, Mungane claims that uh, she suffered a concussion and an open cut on her forehead as well as bruises. While Mungane is back on air at the LA radio station, she claims to continue to suffer from emotional distress and is suing for loss lost income, medical expense, expenses, and damages. 50 previously denied intending to injure anybody and was previously cleared of any potential criminal charges when Los Angeles attorney's office ruled there was no case to answer. So yeah, there's video of the incident and it was just 50 getting mad. But the the theory or like the, the, the behind the scenes story of this is that she was sitting in an area, she, she wasn't in the media section. So... Whenever, and I've, I've actually been in this place, uh, in this section before when I used to actually go, you know, to concerts and interview artists with my old hip hop website. Like I interviewed Fetty Wap, K Camp, whatever. Actually, Fetty Wap, I didn't. I was just there to take photos. But yeah, they give you like this media section in the concerts. And that's where all the cameramen, interviewers, whatever, they all stay in that section. And that's their specific section. So what I'm hearing, what I heard at the time in August was that she left that media section and went closer to towards 50 during the concert to get a better view of the concert. And the area where he threw his microphone wasn't the media section. It was where his staff was at and it just happened to hit her. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to play into court, but she is suing and, uh, you know, we'll keep an eye out and see what happens with the situation. Uh, she's claiming permanent damages. I know people are saying, Oh, a microphone is not that heavy. Trust me. If, if somebody chucks a microphone at you, hits you in the head, it's going to fucking hurt, especially if it's a fast one. People act like if you get something thrown at your head, it's not gonna, it's gonna affect you. I don't care. It's not, it's not the heaviest thing ever. But microphones are are pretty damn heavy, and that that part where you speak into them, that shit hurts, man. That shit's pretty rough, and it's got like those little, whatever, those like kind of, I don't know what the hell to call them, but those kind of like cage like around it. Those shit hurts, man. I'm telling you, I got a microphone right here. It's pretty damn heavy, especially for artists. I'm I'm assuming it's pretty pretty decently heavy. You throw that thing, it's gonna it's gonna fuck you up. So we'll keep our eye on this. Um. But yeah, this this I'm not really surprised by this. I eventually was expecting this, but I thought because the LAPD cleared it, maybe 50 had kind of just talked to her and said, "Hey, I'll give you fifty thousand and just kind of move on from the situation." But uh, we'll see. We'll keep our eye on what happens. Uh, speaking of Snoop Dogg earlier, Snoop Dogg has given us an update. Finally, took ninety million years because this was announced a while ago about his collab album with Dr. Dre. Let's go over the article. Snoop Dogg has offered an update on his new album, Missionary which he's making with Dr. Dre. Appearing on the All of Smoke with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, Snoop revealed that he's currently hard at work in the studio with his longtime collaborator, and they're putting together something he has high hopes for. And let's play the clip. Any new uh, solo projects coming out on the uh, on the label? Yeah, I'm in the lab with Dr. Dre right now working on. That's what we waiting on. Yeah. I was hoping you say that. Yeah, that's Death Row Aftermath. So we finishing up there right now, tightening up the pieces to that. You know, he's a perfectionist, so... You got a time frame on that? Let me fuck you up real quick. The nigga called me one day about two years ago. It's like, nigga, come over. Let me do a couple songs with you. I'm like, all right. So I get over there. He's like, nigga, let me do your album. I'm like, all right, let's go. It's going to take me about two weeks. All right, fuck it. Let's go. We go in, knock out a couple songs. He hit me back. I need two more days. I need two more days. I got that call probably about... 85 times. <laughs> this nigga need two more days all the time. Perfection. But when you hear what we have and how he got me rapping, and it's like a grown Snoop Dogg. It's not like the yeah, nigga and Vigit, but it's, it's a growth mm -hmm. to him. It's the way he selects his bars. It's the way he uses his voice. It's the way he, like, he, I'm talking about me like it's a third party moment. Right. This nigga used me like a fucking robot. <laughs> and I love it. Because I love to be produced. I love to be challenged. I hate when a motherfucker just take it for granted that I'm working with Snoop. Here's the beat. Make a song. Yeah. That I may say some bullshit. Because I go through bullshit. I may be rapping about some shit I said a long time ago or shit that you don't want to hear. But if I'm being produced, we're creating this piece together. And this shit is masterful because my voice is a part of your music. It is actually an instrument. As opposed to we're just bouncing around the track. Use my voice like a fucking instrument. Mm. Let me be a part of the music. So when you hear Dre and Snoop, you all this is what you're gonna learn. 
Every song that you've ever heard from Dre and Snoop, my voice is never on top. It's always in there because it's an instrument. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's doing. He's using me as an instrument right now to create this masterful album. Can we hear something after? I bang a couple for you. Yes, sir. I, this is why I love Dr. Dre. I think he brings the best out of artists. And this is why I say if I want, you know, if, if we do get a new 50 album, we do get a new Eminem album, we do get a new Snoop Dogg album, whatever. I want Dr. Dre's involvement heavily on all those projects because, you know, this is going to be random. And I, <laughs> this is going to be mad random, but I would love to be a producer on a 50 cent album because I, I feel like if I was in the studio with him, I would know I would, I would get the best out of him and I would know what would work. I know it sounds crazy, but I've, I have this thing in my mind that if 50 produced this type of album and I could kind of guide him this way to do it, he'd probably drop one of the best albums of all time. I don't know if it'd be better than Give It or Die Trying, but it would be probably his second best album of all time. So I like that Dr. Dre, and I, you know, he's a perfectionist. I, I, I'm with that as well. Um, there's a lot of times, like the Give It or Die Trying documentary, um, you know, we had a plan for February, you know, to hit right on the 20th anniversary. Didn't happen. I said, two weeks, give me two weeks and I can figure it out. Two weeks goes by, didn't happen. Just like how Snoop was talking about Dre calling him, give me two days, give me two days. That's basically what I was telling everybody. Give me a week, give me a week, I'll figure out. And then it just kept going, going. And that's just how, you know, I, I, it's a blessing, but then it's a curse because, you know, things take forever. But when they come out there, I know that when I release these things, they're going to stay there forever, forever, forever. You know, unless God forbid this whole planet explodes. You know, hundreds and hundreds of years from now, We'll have these files of these documentaries when we're all dead and gone. Our kids, kids, kids will see this stuff. So I'm very particular, and I really put that into my mind that, hey, once this is out there, it's out there, and it's done. You can't revise it. You can't change it. It is what it is. So that's how I'm pretty sure Dr. Dre thinks, and that he wants, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him, too, because Detox never came out. Um, so there's a lot of pressure for Dre to deliver and I'm excited, man. Hopefully, we actually get music in 2024. Speaking of new music, it seems like New Music Friday is a time to be dissing people because Eminem just dropped his track, Doomsday Part 2, dissing Benzino. I just reviewed that in the last video, broke down the bars, and sort of the history between the two. But now I want to talk about Megan Thee Stallion dropping her new track, Hiss. And on this track, she is dissing quite a few people, but I'm going to focus mainly on Nicki Minaj because... Nicki Minaj immediately responded, and in the past 24 hours, it's been crazy, especially on Nicki Minaj's side, because it involved family, and for her, that's very personal. So let's get into it. I'm going to break down the bars that were specifically going at Nicki Minaj. It is in verse 1, and she says this, These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes be mad at Megan's law. I don't really know what the problem is, but I guarantee y'all don't want me to start. You a pussy. Never finna check me. Every chance you get, bet your weak won't address me. I swear they G, but the G must stand for goofy. So those are the lines that everybody speculates is towards Nicki Minaj. And the reason why is because she said this, these hoes don't be mad at Megan, these hoes mad at Megan's law. Now, what is Megan's law? People are wondering, why do people think this is a diss towards Nicki Minaj? What is Megan's law? What does, does that have to do with Nicki Minaj? Well, Megan's law is a federal law in the United States that requires law enforcement to make information available to the public regarding registered sex offenders. It's easy to tie the two if you know Nicki Minaj and her husband, who's been accused of being a sex offender. Uh, he pleaded guilty at the age of 16 to attempted rape. And in July 2022, he was sentenced to a year of house arrest for failing to register at his new address after moving with Minaj to California. So he's had a history of being a sex offender, at least in that moment at the age of 16 when he pleaded guilty. And Nicki Minaj's brother also has a sex offender history as well. At least that's that's the story on, you know, her family and now her husband. So this is why these these lines are people are speculating are towards Nicki Minaj. I wish these newer rappers would just send direct shots at artists. I'm tired of the subliminals. That's why I like Eminem's diss track. It's a direct shot. He mentions Benzino's name. We know 100% it's about him. But this, this is about as direct as it gets in today's time, unfortunately. So after releasing this, it caused the internet to go ablaze. Obviously, everybody's talking about it. Nicki Minaj immediately responded, got on Instagram Live, and... To me, it seems like she had a diss track 
ready loaded in the chamber because she previewed a song where she's disrespecting Megan the Stallion and basically making fun of her foot, you know, getting shot and then, you know, some other things here and there. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to this, y'all. I was that day. Hey, y'all. I said <laughs> Play it as a brother, you man. Play it as a brother, cause you know I just thought I'd have a little fun. So I've been, you know, we've been celebrating all year. Uh, hey yo, hey yo, bad bitch, she like six foot. I call it big foot. The bitch fell off. I said, get up on your big foot. <laughs> After previewing her new diss track on Instagram Live, fans caught on to the fact that Nicki Minaj was liking tweets, disrespecting Megan Thee Stallion, and making fun of her Tory Lanez shooting. And then that night, things calmed down. In the morning, Megan Thee Stallion decided to call into the Breakfast Club. It's for these bitches or these hoes. Um, bitches and hoes are like men or women. Um, every time one of these motherfuckers use making a stay your name, they get 24 hours of attention. Basically, I understand what y'all doing and I want y'all to get up off me. After Megan Thee Stallion appeared on Breakfast Club, then a couple hours later, Megan Thee Stallion released the music video for Hiss. After this, this is when Nicki Minaj decided to go all the way in on Megan. She decided to start tweeting and then she also went on Station Head and basically revealed a lot of things that people didn't know between the history of Megan and Nikki. You didn't. A real bitch would have been like, oh, you know what? Just let, FYI, I fucked such and such, and I fucked this one, I fucked that. So, you know. But you let, you, you, you let everyone just be under the bus, be thrown under the bus. You let the baby be thrown under the bus, Tori, your best friend, your mom. You better go conjure up your mother and say, and, and apologize. That, you, you, that's disgusting. You guys chose to constantly make my family the focal point, right? And remember what I told you would happen every time? But I understand how you begged, begged, begged. I did I was trying so hard, like out not to like not to pay your dumb ass no mind, because I could tell you was thirsty. You was and I don't know if you sucked my DJ or not, but you was his best friend hitting him every day. Can, can I get on clean radio? Can I get on clean radio? I go on live, you begging my fans, tell her, tell her to add me, tell her to add me. After appearing on Station Head, talking like that, you know, talking about things that happen behind the scenes and throwing people under the bus. She was mentioning how Megan threw the baby under the bus, Tory Lanez under the bus, Party under the bus, all these people, and that she was trying to, you know, do things with other men and married men and stuff like that. Nikki dropped a super long tweet, which I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's super long, but she dropped this tweet, and this is where... Now just Nikki just started going off and going off in some ways, rightfully so, because, you know, Megan's mentioning family. So I can understand why Nikki got so heated. So Nikki basically in these tweets reminded that this actually not really tweets is one long tweet reminded people of her success with Pink Friday, too. She said this uh, gag city does not condone bullying. This is a long ass tweet, so I don't care if you ain't reading all that below is a kind of tweet they hate. Pink Friday, Platinum, Super Freaky Girl, Triple Platinum, Red Ruby the Sleaze, Platinum, FTCU, Gold, L-T-I-S-Y, Gold, Everybody with Lil Uzi, Gold, Pink Friday to, uh, Tour, already added a bunch of dates, sold out. She said this, did y'all run up that Barbie World song they tried? It's bubbling under 100 this week, video and all, and didn't crack the Hot 100. It's a bub. They losing so much money with BF, ain't generate. Not one penny of that profit yet and claims she went to college but can't read her contract. Another manipulation she, so she can kick people to the curb after they helped her. Did y'all run up her color purple song? Nope. Huge VMA's performance. Big video flop. Everybody, every album she's ever released flopped. Paid media all all the time, fraudulent awards, flops. Horrible actor that can't cry on cue. Don't try to act a bookie. It's a chop. Pathological and manipulative liar using ghostwriters and still sucks. And then she went on a couple different things about her accolades and awards and continued on. 
and it just kept going more and more. So she said, ha ha ha, don't fucking care if the blogs and paid bots was real. Y'all would have been able to sell albums and headline tours. Ha ha ha. More police suck my fat. You know what? Pink Friday, Gag City, who mad? Eye for an eye, Roman, which is her alter ego. Uh, this is where, you know, this is where we understand why Nikki got so upset because she said this. Y'all want to bring up family members and lying on your dead mother. So now she's bringing in Megan Thee Stallion's mother who passed away. Uh, lied to Gail, lied on and f***ed your best friend, man. Told me to drink and go to the clinic if I was pregnant. All because I wouldn't let your funky butt pour liquor down my throat. Think she a bully. Because she got the Rock Nation brunch every year. Be mad at party. He told all your tea, but you taking shots at my family. Bah ha ha ha. Get up on your good foot. Pink Friday 2, Platinum, go apologize to your mother. Nasty serpent, repent. Now, this is where people were like, what's going on? Why is she talking about pregnancy and uh, Megan trying to you know, shove alcohol down her throat? What is going on here? People were a little, little confused about this. And this is where you know, Nicki Minaj, for the most part, has receipts of what she's talking about. She's not, you know for the most part, lying about anything that I'm, I've am i researched and looked into. Uh, she says, I have text messages if I get the go, if anyone says I'm lying. So now we got the video and the text messages. What is she talking about the video? So fans found an old video of Megan and Nikki hanging out on Instagram Live. And it seems like Megan the Stallion is talking about something that they're talking about privately, but they're not going to talk about on Instagram Live. And then Nicki Minaj whispers something and then, Nikki says something about it's a beautiful and then she stops. So it seems like there was something like that going on where Megan wanted to get, you know, Nikki to drink. And then, you know, Nikki is saying that Megan wanted her to get an abortion if she did have a baby, which is kind of weird and crazy. Um, but the video kind of implies that now that it was actually said in the video. No, but it does. If you watch it, it does kind of, you know, seem like that's what's going on. And it kind of makes sense now that she's explained it. And she says she has text messages. So uh, that's a whole different thing. Happy gonna be upset. <laughs> I Why? said something earlier, girl. She put me in text so fast. She was like, hold on. Because my husband, <laughs> he's in the other room. I was like, oh, Because I know he was back there. But only his husband, you said what you said. But that's, that's I ain't, I ain't even going to say what I said. And so but if it happened, we know what we got to do. <laughs> no, we not doing that. No, we not. I've abused. Continuing on, she said, What a disgusting serpent. Y'all post party song under this. They paid it. They paid to make it disappear. Let's go. Lying on your dead mother is insane, too. But party said it. It wasn't me. So then she brings up uh, Party, who is uh, Megan Thee Stallion's ex uh, boyfriend. Uh, he released music and basically talked about, you know, how Megan uh, was doing a bunch of lies and all, all this stuff. And Nikki's saying, all the information she got was from Party, so she should be mad at him. Uh, and then Nicki Minaj decided to go on Instagram Live. And this is where she got even more mad. And I'm just going to play the Instagram Live for you guys. And you guys can clearly hear she's upset. Even on camera, after I tried to tell her off camera, hey, no, I'm not, I can't do that. I'm not drinking, you know. And then e even in the video, you could see her, her attention is on my husband. Go and watch the video on Twitter. This is the type of woman that can't wait to be around someone's man. To see if they'll pay her a... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still at it. Because 2024, everybody getting the full motherfucking clip. I dare you. I dare you, bitch, to say one more thing about my family, ho. Or y'all got a motherfucking clip coming and y'all don't even fucking know, bitch. I f dare you. I know you listening right now, you fragment foot. Bullet fragment foot. Bullet fragment. Bullet fragment, bitch. She a bullet fragment. Bullet fragment. Now listen here, ho. Get up on your good foot. Bitch, I said get up on your good foot, not your bad foot. Was that a diss or a piss? Said it was his. I said piss. That my fans called it piss. Yo, said all that shit about you. Yo, ex 
or that just was around you all that y'all mad because y'all don't have somebody that loves you and stand 10 toes down behind you so you bringing up 30 year old teeth from when this child when this man was a 15 year old person child you bringing up 30 year old tea because no man has ever and will ever fucking love you and lying on your dead mother on your dead mama on your dead you know lied on a dead mama but you will not disrespect papa bear you dirty fucking ran through bird bum ass broke you broke tell them the truth what you did to Kelsey was disgusting. What you put that woman to, through. You put your black friend, a young black woman, let her be bullied nonstop. Went on Gail King. Bitch, bitch lying on her mama soul. On her mama soul. On her dead mama soul. Yeah, ain't sliding this year. Ain't sliding because y'all think. All that other shit that was sliding is going to slide now. And it's, it's certain things I know. I don't think y'all want me to say it. And I'm not only talking about Bigfoot. See that? 104000 More than you can sell in the first week with three Grammys. You see that? That's what happened when you what? Lie on your dead mama. 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 Talk about my family, what I said. Now, bitch, you're going to learn this year. And all you, I dare you, bitches. I dare any of you, bitches. And any of you, bitches. Uh, uh, oh. If that Rock Nation brunch got you feeling like you could talk about my family. And I have a three-year-old innocent child have had my home swatted twice with with guns drawn they magically no one no one seemed to find the, the person play with papa at your own risk this woman clearly was jealous from the moment you could see it on the live I, and I was so I was so confused. Oh yes, yeah, she's very ungrateful. Very ungrateful and God is going to expose her and everyone conspiring with her. And remember I said this. Now go and put put everything you want to put on them blogs thinking that I give a fuck. Following that as I'm recording this video, Nicki Minaj is still tweeting and she tweets a preview lyric to the diss track. She says, Megan's Law. For a free beat, you could hit Megan Raw. And then she quotes Roman with writing pen emoji, whatever. Um, so she's working on a diss track. I'm, I just love the hip-hop competition. I don't like when family members get dragged and stuff like that. I think uh, just keep it between the artists and, uh, you know, don't don't drag, you know, uh, Megan's dead mother and Nikki's family. And it's just that gets messy. I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of hip-hop competition. And just great bars and diss tracks. That's it. So, uh, you know, I, I understand where Nicki Minaj is coming from. Her family getting dragged into the situation. You get really upset about that. I understand that wholeheartedly. Um, and then Megan, you know, going in and defending her name because she's getting her name dragged through by a bunch of people. So, I think women in hip-hop have become very, very dope, successful. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. It's been a... Uh, breath of fresh air in hip hop to have a lot of women succeed because usually it's only one woman that's dominating. It's been like that for a while. Now it's a bunch. And, uh, to be honest with you, the women in hip hop are making hip hop more interesting. Uh, a lot of the male rappers just aren't competing like that. Um, and if they are, they're just doing it with tweets and stuff. Um, at least Nikki's previewing music. That's a diss track towards, uh, you know, Megan the stallion. At least we're getting that. I know Nikki's tweeting too, but at least there's music involved. Megan drops hiss. Potentially, Nicki Minaj drops her diss track and then back and forth and back and forth with diss tracks. I like the hip-hop competition of it, but let me know what you guys think, man. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Did Megan go too far involving family? Is Nicki Minaj just overreacting and just reaching with too much stuff? And then is she wrong for dragging 
Megan's dead mom in this. Um, let me know what you guys think, and uh, we'll keep our eye out if anything else happens. And just like that, as we predicted, Nicki Minaj has officially responded to Megan The Stallion's diss track on Wax, which means track for track. And let's get into it and break down the bars. The track is titled Bigfoot. If you're unaware of what's going on, check out my previous video where I break down what Megan The Stallion did and Nicki Minaj's response to her diss track on social media. Now we're following up with Nicki Minaj responding with her own diss track. Let's get into the bars. Let's see what Nicki Minaj has got for Megan The Stallion. Now, Nicki Minaj has previewed some of these bars on her social media uh, of the track. Obviously, she previewed it on Instagram Live, literally like right after Megan dropped her track, probably 30 minutes later, an hour later, she went on Instagram Live and previewed some of the lines from this track already. So some of the lines are not surprising, which I think Nicki should have kind of stayed off social media and just dropped the track immediately. I think it would have been, it would have hit a lot harder because now we know some of the lines because of social media, but let's go over it. So it starts out by saying, your flow is such a bore, drinking a bottle of Henny through a straw. You better stop that dialogue before I hit Carl and buy your catalog. Now that's some boss shit, you know, hitting up uh, Carl, the previous uh, record label owner that she was signed to, to buy her catalog. That's just next level shit that like Nicki Minaj got the money to do. So that's a hard bar just because of, you know, we know Nicki Minaj is a way bigger artist overall. How you go on Gail King and can't cry. Killed by uh, Bigfoot, but you still a small fry swearing on your dead mother when you lie. Of course, Nicki Minaj is dragging Megan Thee Stallion's uh, mother who passed away back in 2019 due to a brain tumor. So, you know, I talked about in my last video how, you know, I think this is too far. And I'm going to talk about why it's a little too far after I go over these bars because... Yeah, I'm just talking about it. So, let's get into the verse now. Hey, yo, this little begging talking about Megan's Law. So, if you guys don't remember, on the hiss track, Megan the Stallion rapped, these hoes don't be mad at Megan, these hoes mad at Megan's Law. Megan's Law is uh, a law that, that went through about relating to sexual uh, offenders. And, you know, Nicki Minaj is uh, married to a sexual offender and has a brother that's a sexual offender. So, uh, that's what she's referring to on there. Uh, for a free beat, you can hit Megan Raw. This is a bar that she previewed on social media, which, uh, you know, kind of works with Megan's Law really well. But then this is something that we didn't hear. Uh, if you a ghostwriter, party in Megan's jaw. Now, Nikki, because she's a talented lyricist, and she is, I think anybody that oversees that or doesn't recognize that is just ridiculous. But she has a lot of double entendres here where she says something and it means two different things. Um, so... In this, she says, if you're a ghostwriter, party in Megan's jaw. She's One thing she's saying is there's going to be a party in there, meaning like if you're a ghostwriter, she will, you know, do things to you and give you favors, if you know what I'm talking about. I can't say it, you know, because it's too explicit, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And then she refers the party and party. Party is the guy, um, Megan the Stallion's ex-boyfriend. Uh, so uh, she's referring to him being in her jaw, and then she's saying that if you're a ghostwriter, that she will have she will party with you regardless. So it's a double entendre, which is really uh really cool. And you know, party's been been known or at least been accused or whatever you want to throw uh, as a ghostwriter for Megan Thee Stallion. That's what that's what party is. Uh, not only was he you know her ex boyfriend. But there are rumors that he was he was ghostwriting for her, just like how Safari had rumors. Like when Megan, when Nicki Minaj was with Safari, there are rumors that Safari was rapping or ghostwriting for her. Uh, shots thrown, but I still ain't let Megan score. Bad, bitch. she like six foot. I call her Bigfoot, which is the bar she previewed. This bitch fell off. I said, get up on your good foot. Uh, and she ain't still topped Red Ruby. Red Ruby is Nicki Minaj's song, and she's saying that, you know, Megan Thee Stallion is nowhere near my level. She can't even top that song, and it's not even my biggest song. Um, so, uh, trying to steal a sauce, I said, get up out my cookbook. You know, Nicki's always said that a lot of these new female rappers are taken from her uh, and stealing, you know, her flow, her style, whatever the case may be. So, that's what that's what this is uh, referring to. But really, I'm a sweetie pie, which... Is playing on Megan Thee Stallion's tracks, Sweetie Pie, just, you know, kind of referencing it. P-R-T-T-Y, but I'm P-E-T-T-Y. Pretty, but I'm petty. Um, um, why did you lie about your lipo? Now, if you don't know Megan Thee Stallion, 
there's been reports and rumors that she got plastic surgery done, but she's always denied it. So um, that's something that there's been reports of Nikki as well. So Nikki bringing it up, you know, Nikki's had a history of that as well. But I don't know. I don't know what's the truth in this. I'm just talking to you guys, so don't go in the comments attacking me and going crazy. I'm just talking what I what what's been reported out there. So she's mentioning the lipo and saying, you know, why did you lie about it? Uh, fucking your best friend, man, is crazy. You the type, though. Now this is where Nikki gets into the bag of you know Megan the Stallion slept with a lot of people, and even best friends of best friends. Like you know that's why she said in the Instagram live when she went live the other day that. Megan and Stallion was eyeing Nikki's husband a lot. So she's the type to sleep with, you know, someone's husband, someone's best friend, whatever the case may be. Now, you know, do we know that it's true? I don't know. We don't, we're, we're, we're just outsiders in this world looking in based on what they, they're talking about. But that's where a lot of the Tory Lane situation got bad because there's, there were reports of like people being with each other and, you know, not clarifying who's with who and then people sleeping with each other and then boom, shooting happens and blah, 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 so on and so forth. So that was a little fishy in its own end. Uh, you was lying to the queen and you went to the king, Gail. So this referring to Megan Stallion getting interviewed by Gail Kling and she allegedly got shot by Tory Lanez and Nicki Minaj is referencing her lying because Megan couldn't cry on cue and has been up to debate if she got shot or not. Uh, the 33-year-old T. So Stale. Here, Nikki refers to her husband, Kenneth Petty's criminal conviction as a registered uh, sex offender as T. So, uh, you know, he got he got convicted in 2000, uh, not in 2015, but uh, when he was 15 years old. And, you know, she's saying, why do you guys keep bringing this up? This is a long time ago, you know, and so on and so forth. You guys are just bringing up the same thing. That's all you guys can bring up, which I can understand. Kylie kicked you out and made you stumble to the car. You know, Megan was with Kylie Jenner the night the shooting happened with Tory, Tory Lanez. So uh, she's just making fun of the fact that, you know, there's video footage of her stumbling to her car. Barb's, I need a good alcohol bar. This is another double entendre. And uh, her needing a bar was well-rhymed verse that covers Megan Thee Stallion's alleged, alleged, allegedly, alcohol abuse. That's the alleged thing. Uh, her Then she's also asking her fans uh, for a place to drink at. A bar or nightclub. So it's a double entendre. Roman weight, that was a bar, like a bodybuilder. I keep raising the bar. You get shot with no scar. So she's saying that, you know, you really didn't get shot because there's no scar there. But Megan a while ago shared a photo of her foot and it looked pretty bad. So I don't know. Um, that's something that's, uh, despite the evidence, uh, you know, she's saying, I don't believe you that you got shot. Now, in these next few bars, she's going to throw a lot of names out there that she she is saying Megan the Stallion slept with. She starts out saying, shit will get dark like chocolate. I'm about to get up in your ass. Clinch. Mm, yeah, sort of like French. Here, she's referring to potentially French Montana, allegedly sleeping with Megan the Stallion. So that's the first person, French Montana. They got you all them Grammys, but your flow's still a no. What a... Fiasco Lupe. She's not saying Lupe slept with uh, Megan because Lupe honestly is in his own world. I don't think he wants to get dragged to this. Shout out to Lupe Fiasco. He's an amazing lyricist. Continuing on, Future made you pay. She's referencing that uh, Future charged her 250000 for a track uh, that they did. Um, she mentioned this on Twitter. I guess, I don't know if that's really a diss, but whatever. Charging people for, for features is... Pretty normal unless you're really cool with the person. So first, French Montana. Now, she mentions quite a few names. She says this. She want to party with the baby while rubbing on Tori's toupee. So <laughs> party, that's the ex-boyfriend. Uh, the baby, which the baby has confirmed in his own track a while ago that he released that he slept uh, with Megan. And Tori Lanes. So... <laughs> Tory Lane's got got the funny part of this verse because why is Tory Lane's hair getting mentioned? Uh, he's probably like, man, why am I getting dragged in this bullshit while he's locked up? It's hilarious. The fact that he got dragged into this. But that's already four people she's mentioned. Now she mentions more. She says, I guess she needed money bags for them Trey songs. Money bag yo and Trey songs. That's six people. Um, and then she says, she g easy. That we saw that video of Jeezy and her chilling. Carl Carl made her crawl for it. This is a double entendre. Uh, Nikki 
has created a rhyme involving some of the men Megan Stallion has allegedly slept with. Carl made her crawl for also sounds like Carl Crawford. He's an American baseball player that Megan has allegedly had relations with. That's the guy that invested in Megan the Stallion, Carl Crawford. This is a nice double entendre because Carl made her crawl, like she's saying crawl because she can't walk with her foot, made her crawl for it. But it's Crawford. So it's a double entendre, great bars, seven people she's mentioned. And then she goes, that's seven people. After that, she says, and why the f*** they poked the monster f***ing with Nikki, this hoe, I'm coming like a star. Uh, she's just mad that, that no guy ever loved her. No guy going to stand 10 toes behind her. Is it my fault? I got a good, you know what? Uh, why the f*** is you humping on a minor? This is the this is where the track, I'm like, why did she mention this? Because she's the last person to be mentioned in this. Um, you know, she's she's had lab dances with 14 year olds on stage in a concert. That's not, you know, you're talking about humping on a minor, but you're doing lap dances at 14. For 13 year olds. That's not a good look. Obviously her brother's a offender. Husband's an offender. She's the last person to be mentioning these type of things. So that line was was what kind of made this diss track a little less. But uh, continuing on. Because she's lying on your dead mama. Lying on your dead mama. So she's saying all these lies. And your, your mom's dead. You're lying on your dead mama. Uh, and then she does an outro. Which reminds me a lot of 50 Cent. Because you know they're both from Queens. Southside Queens. And 50 likes to go on these rants and talk shit. And that's what she did here. So now listen up, Bigfoot. She said, you know, I got a lot of tea. I went easy on you. Gra glass fragment foot. You know what? Uh, you know, whenever I meet a woman that would F her man's friend and let her your friend talk about your ex's baby mama on the internet, I know that they have a very evil spirit where my prayer word is. Uh, so she's talking about, you know, um, you know, Megan the Stallion sleeping with a lot of different people and willing to sleep with Nicki Minaj's husband because of the way she was eyeing her. So she says, uh, I don't think you want the next installment of this song, which is interesting. I know it's the most attention you've ever gotten. One flow ho, but uh, trust. If you don't apologize to your mama in 24 hours, it's going to get uglier than a Ken Barbie, okay? Don't play. But I'm very serious, ho, the things you lied about even pertaining to your mom, you don't want them out, okay? Now, since you want to think it's funny to speak about people's families, we'll all join in. We'll all play the reindeer games. Soon as your no, your new nose heals. As soon as you're, well, let's leave that for the second installment. What do I think about the track? And first, Nicki Minaj, a lot of people right now, because I'm recording this as this track came out, a lot of people on social media are kind of giving Nicki Minaj flack for not delivering. A lot of people are not really liking the track, but this is my my take on it, and this is the way I'm viewing it. I think this is just the because Nikki has revealed that she has four more tracks. That if Megan responds, there's gonna be four more tracks coming out. So this is the way I view this Bigfoot track. I view it as a sparring, a little punch here and there to get Megan to respond, and then Nikki goes full out. That's the way I'm viewing this track. So I'm not really you know, going crazy over the fact that it's not the most craziest diss track ever. Now, I like the double entendres. Nicki Minaj can rap. I think anybody that has that messed up, screwed up, that nah, they're tripping. Nicki Minaj has been able to rap. I love Pink Prank, that album. She kills it on there. She is an amazing rapper. I think anybody denying that, I think she's probably one of the best female rappers that's ever been out there. She's got bars, and she's she puts some of the bars on here too to give some shots to Megan. Now, this is the, the part where I really give Nicki Minaj props. She mentioned Neg uh, Megan's name directly. That's where I give her props because in today's time, so many artists do subliminal shots, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the subliminals. There are grown men in hip-hop that do subliminals, and I'm like, this was never hip-hop, man. Jay-Z eventually made that cool, which was the dumbest thing ever. Just go directly at people, man. I'm tired of the subliminals guessing if this line's about this person, this person. Just go directly and thank you for Nicki Minaj for going directly at Megan. There is no guess about who this is about. This is clearly about Megan. She mentions her name multiple times. So salute to Nicki Minaj for that. That's a huge thing in hip hop that I'm grateful for because other people just do subliminals. It's so annoying. So that's the, that's the second thing. So the first thing, uh, bars on this track. Second thing, direct shots. Uh, and there's some cool lines on here, but I think that little line about the, uh, what is it? Humping on a minor. That's that's she should have left that out because she's the last person to be talking about minors and stuff like that. It's not, 
you know, I'm not, not, I'm not taking each side. I never will take each side on this. I think, uh, both artists are talented in their own right. I think Nicki Minaj is more lyrically talented than Megan is, but that's just my opinion. It's nothing to take too serious. I, you know, I've, I mean, Nicki Minaj, I've grown up with Nicki Minaj. So I've, I have a lot more of her music in my phone, you know, and I, I, uh, I love that beat beat record 50, 50 cents, my favorite. So, you know, with Queen Southside, shout out to Nicki. But yeah, I, I love the track. I think it's a great, great, uh, great record to kind of spar with. And let's see if Megan Thee Stallion has something to say. She did post something on, on Instagram. Um, it basically referenced an anime on her stories. It's like a photo of like uh, these these red flowers, I think it was. And somebody mentioned what this reference was because Megan Thee Stallion is an anime fan. And in the anime, it's talking about like there's things are going to get really ugly. It's going to get deadly. So that's what she referenced in her story. So I don't know. Maybe she's going to respond. I hope she does. I'm, I'm all for the hip-hop competition. But mentioning, uh, this is what I want to get back to what I was saying in the beginning, mentioning someone's dead mother, that's where, you know, I can understand Nikki's point of view because her family was dragged into this, but a dead person's a whole different, like, tier. I'm not a fan of hip-hop artists that do that. You know, I'm not not for that, man. Um, the reason why is because a lot of Nikki stands, not fans, but stands, are literally finding where Megan Thee Stallion's mom's grave's at. And called to try to get, you know, uh, her grave destroyed or something like that. I don't know. I saw it on Twitter. Um, luckily, people called in to make to stop it from happening. But that's too far. Like, if you're a fan doing that, I, I don't rock with you at all. That's not cool, guys. Uh, let's keep it just music. And, uh, you know, I love Nikki. You know, and Megan's got her own uh, cool thing about her. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think of the diss track. And, uh you know, I appreciate, like I said, Nikki for going directly at somebody. That's that's how you go at somebody, and I'm glad that we don't have to guess, and it's clear as day, and she's got four more tucked. So if Cardi B wants to jump out of nowhere, which I would love to see, I think Cardi B and Nikki would be a lot more entertaining than uh, Nikki and Megan, which is cool. Megan's Megan's a dope artist in her own right. But, uh, yeah, we'll keep our eye out and see what happens, and I'll keep you guys posted. Eminem. Eminem did an interview with um, DJ, DJ Who Kid. They were talking about the 20-year anniversary coming up of Shade 45, which is Eminem's uh, radio station on Sirius XM. And Who Kid is one of the the hosts of the shows over at Shade 45, including Sway in the Morning and other programs. And Who Kid asked the questions that all the fans want to know. This is why I like Who Kid. This is why I like when he interviews Eminem and 50, because he asks the music questions because he's a DJ. So, of course, he cares about the music. And he asked Eminem. Uh, as the interview, once the interview was getting to wrap up, uh, he asked them and him, first off, he asked him, what can we expect from you in 2024? He said, I'm working on something. I'm cooking up something basically, which basically not gonna be surprised if we get an album this year from him. But then who kid asks, is there ever going to be a collab album with you and 50 cent? So let me play the clip and then talk about it after. And my final question, 50 cent Eminem collab album. What's up? Where'd that come from? <laughs> Bro, that I don't know whose idea that was, but that's crazy. I heard it through the grapevine. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yo, I'm trying to get him to make another album so bad. We need another 50 album, like really bad, bro. Oh, 50 is on a roll right now. He's been on a roll since the tour, man. And I told him he needs to fucking, whatever he needs from me, I'm here. That shit would be crazy, though, uh, an album with me and him. That, that's it right there. Yes, Eminem. Thank you, Marshall Bruce Mathers III. Thank you for trying to push 50 Cent to fucking drop a new album. If the only, the only person in the world that could push 50 to drop a new album is this guy. So if he's trying to get 50 to drop an album, we're finally possibly going to get... This is the only thing that's giving me hope. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care if 50 speaks on it in interviews, which he's done... That never gives me hope because 50 says he's working on music and shit never comes out. This is the only hope that we can, the 50 Cent fans, us, the legion of fans that can grasp on and hold on to. This is the only thing that I think is a potential thing that could potentially happen. Now, the collab album, that's been talked about for ages, man. When 50 was shooting the My Life video, uh, when he dropped that single My Life with Adam Levine and Eminem, MTV interviewed them, and then 50 talked about a collab album. He said, yeah, that would be crazy. Eminem says that all the time. But even in 2012, when they shot that, hasn't happened. So 
the closest that we ever got to Eminem and, Col- Eminem and 50 collab album was the re-up project. There was like four tracks, I believe, or five tracks, Eminem and 50. I know it's past their prime, but I do believe, I wholeheartedly believe, that if Dr. Dre gets involved and it's Eminem and 50 in the studio with Dr. Dre, we could potentially get a really, really great album. Would it be a classic? The chances of that are very slim, but we could get an incredible fucking album. If that happens, I'm going to fucking lose my shit on live. I'm going to go on YouTube live and lose my fucking shit. I am. I'm going to lose my shit. I'm going to throw shit. I'm going to throw this table. I'm going to fucking throw things. I'm going to grab a champagne bottle, smash it over my head. Whatever I got to do to, to, to show my appreciation for this, I will do it. Um, but thank you, Eminem. Thank you for pushing 50 to finally release an album. We need a new 50 album bad. It's been since 2014, Animal Ambition. Bro, I was in, I just graduated high school. Actually, I graduated in 2013, but basically freshman in high in college because I dropped out of college, but I was a freshman at the time. Yeah, it's been a, such a long time. Like, why haven't we got these albums? Why haven't we got music? Like, I think the number one reason is because 50 is worried that he's not going to sell a lot the first week. And that, you know, Rick Ross, would, William Roberts, a.k.a. William Roberts, would probably clown him or people, his enemies would clown him. Which, that doesn't matter in today's time, man. You sold your albums. You were in your prime. You did your thing. You dominated. You did. You had the highest debut album, hip-hop album of all time. Nobody's beaten that title yet, even though they thought Drake was going to do it. That never happened. You still hold that title. You have two diamond worldwide albums. You know, like, what more do you want? You, you maximize, 50 maximize his career to the utmost potential. So if he doesn't sell that much in today's time, does he really even need music sales at this point? What's, what's the, what is that going to bring him in revenue? It's not going to do much, man. So I want an Eminem and 50 album and I want a new 50 album, like badly. Like this year, I want the Snoop and Dre album. I want a new Eminem album and I want a 50 album and I want an Eminem and 50 collab album. Make it happen or else. You hear me, Slim Shady, Dr. Dre, and Curtis Jackson. Stop focusing on the TV shit. Get to the fucking music. The fans, that's what the fans want. Sorry, I get very passionate about this stuff because you guys know it's been a long time. I'm a 50 fan, so I was about to lose my mind. I, 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 I swear to God, I will, lose, I will lose my mind if this shit drops. I will go on YouTube Live and lose my mind. I potentially could get banned from YouTube Live. I don't know. I don't know how I'll act. I don't know. When the day comes, I don't know how I'll act. So I'm coming with a bulletproof vest and a gun, a, a real gun, loaded. I might, I might end up shooting a bullet in the air and fuck up this whole office roof. I might shoot a couple bullets. In, I don't know, man. Well, I'm just saying. I want a 50 Cent or Eminem collab album. I'm happy with either or, man. I'm happy with either or. Just make it happen, Eminem. Please keep pushing it. If there's any chance in hell you're, you're listening to this, please push for it. Like, I'm begging at this point. And you're right, 50 hasn't dropped an album in a long time, and I'm glad you are begging him too because I don't know what more. The Final Lap Tour literally made it clear that people miss 50 and they love 50 musically. That doesn't make it more clear for 50. I don't know what else will. So We love the TV stuff, Fifth. Fucking love Power, love BMF, love For Life, love all these shows, love everything. But damn it. I became a fan because of the music. So I want music. Anyways, speaking of new albums and artists that can potentially drop an album, let's get into it, man. We're going to be talking about another new music and albums coming out. Jay-Z. Yes, Jay-Z is potentially rumored to drop an album. And it's because of this. Uh, Jay-Z fans are on high alert after a new social media post by a potential collaborator seems to indicate that a pro- that the prolific MC will be... Le- will, uh, will be releasing a new album soon. On Sunday, January 28th, video director Hi DJ, I don't know how to pronounce his name, it's H-I-D-J-I-I, or I, took his Instagram stories to update his followers on an upcoming production after sharing a blurry video, geotagged Atlanta, Georgia, and soundtracked by Outcast, Outcast's classic Players Ball. He shared a screenshot of a text exchange between him and someone else, replying to the fan's inquiry about who he was shooting, uh, simply texted. He simply texted Jay Z. He then shared a photo of a clapperboard, which had the production title listed as Jay Z 
Dash 2024 album. I don't know that that director doing that. I, I hope he's not going to get fired or there's going to be problems because of that, because I don't know about releasing information about him working on an album is actually a good move. Um, the rumors started circulating, but uh, Rock Nation responded and said this. That's news to us, meaning we never heard of Jay-Z working on an album. Now, Rock Nation is obviously Jay-Z's company, um, but, you know, Jay-Z might, might not have told him, man. Maybe he's working in secret about it, and maybe this is a way to kind of, uh, you know, tease people because it's been a long time for a Jay-Z album, too. His last album, he dropped solo, lead album, solo. I'm not talking about the Beyonce collab or any other thing he did. Solo albums, 2017. So I'm hoping this year it's the year of the OGs. We get an Eminem, we get a Snoop and Dre, we get a Jay-Z, we get a M, uh, Eminem 50, we get a 50 album, we get whatever else in the OG sphere. We get that T.I. album finally, the King's Throne or Dethroned King, whatever it was, because I love the active song, Kevin Gates. We get whatever. I'm all for it, man. I hope this is the year for it. Uh, after the 50-year anniversary, was so disappointing with a lot of these OGs that didn't drop, besides Nas, shout out to Nas, and a few others. So hopefully they make up for it this year, 2024, <clears throat> Kobe's year too, so why not, man? Um, so that's exciting. Speaking of new music, let's get into it. Uh, Friday, a lot of stuff dropped. Kevin Gates dropped The Ceremony. I listened to the album. I'm going to give you guys a review of the album on the next episode. Um, I definitely want to review albums. I need to do that more often. I just sometimes don't have time to listen to projects. I am listening to 2021, 21 Savages album, so I, re I will review both albums on the next episode. I'm going to keep that promise to you guys. So that dropped the ceremony. Megan Thee Stallion dropped the hiss diss track. Uh, I Spice dropped Thank You The Shit Fart, which is a hilarious title of a track. Benny The Butcher dropped Everybody Can't Go Album. This is another album I got to check out. Lyrical Lemonade dropped All Is Yellow. The only track I've heard of it from it is the Eminem Doomsday Part 2, but I got to check out the rest. Uh, 21 Little Herald and J.I.D. dropped Sundown. Skepta dropped Gas Me Up. Koi Ray dropped Wanna Come Through. And the Kid Ray dropped Heaven. So check out all those tracks, you know, if you're interested in the music that came out. Album sales, let's get into it. So 21 Savage is still number one with American Dream at 75,000 sold. Uh, number two is Morgan Wallen, One Thing at a Time. Jesus, this album's been on the charts for so long. It's ridiculous. I don't. I think it's like four times platinum already. Uh, 63,000 sold, number two. Drake for All the Dogs, number three, 52,000 sold. Green Day, Green Day got a new album? Damn, I haven't heard Green Day in a minute. Uh, debuted at number four with Saviors at 51,000 sold. Noah Khan, Stick Season, number five with 48,000 sold. Taylor Swift, 1989, number six with 47,000 sold. SZA, SOS, number seven with 39,000 sold. Nicki Minaj, Pink Friday, number eight with 39,000 sold. Zach Bryan, self-titled album, number nine with 38,000 sold. Taylor Swift, Lover, number 10 with 38,000 sold. Taylor Swift is all over these charts. Uh, Travis Scott, Utopia, number 15 with 32,000 sold. Going down, Rod Wave Nostalgia, number 24 with 21,000 sold. Drake Take Care, number 26 with 20,000 sold. Metro Boomin Heroes and Villains, number 31 with 18,000 sold. Eminem Curtain Call, number 34 with 18,000 sold. Lil Baby My Turn, number 40 with 17,000 sold. Drake Certified Loverboy, number 45 with 15,000 sold. Drake 21 Savage, Her Loss, number 47 with 15,000 sold. And Kendrick Lamar, damn. That went back up on the charts at number 50 with 15,000 sold. Interesting. Yeah, that's it for today's episode of. I know there's there was a lot, a lot of diss tracks back and forth, but I'm happy. I love when I get to cover a lot of things and not just, you know, regular news cycles. I love when the hip hop competition comes. So uh, let me know what you guys think of everybody's diss track and stuff like that. Kind of gave my thoughts on everything. I think uh, the competition is great. But like I said, if it gets if it gets too personal, that's when things start to get a little weird. But uh you can't, it's hard to prevent that, especially if you're disrespecting each other, you know, at the end of the day. As long as nobody puts hands on each other in person, um, you know, it is what it is. But uh, that's it for today's episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast. Stream of Spotify, Deezer, Pocket Cast, YouTube, all that. And, uh, you know, we're going to have that sponsor. It's going to be coming up here pretty soon. So please support it. I ask you guys anything to support. I appreciate the liking, viewing, commenting, all that it means the world to me. If you can, if you can, if you have the means to support this product, I'm going to be pushing because they're going to be sponsoring the whole season four, the rest of the season four. I know we started already, but um, so, you know, it's going to be starting here pretty soon. It's not really going to change the podcast much. I mean, I'm going to be talking about the product pretty much. That's about it here and there. Uh, it's not going to, I don't want to bombard you guys with ads 24 seven. I think that's 
that's not really, it ruins the, the, the user's listening experience in my opinion. But for this, since they're doing the whole season and I could potentially build a relationship with them, you know, this, I got to hit out the park. So I'm going to be promoting it. Uh, just not in an annoying way where you guys are going to be frustrated with me and be like, Oh, why are you keep pushing this product? It's annoying. You know, it's going to be tastefully done. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. As always, have an amazing night, day, whenever you're listening to this, and peace.